Um Sum was relaxing on the grass when a tiny feather brushed across his neck. The light tickle made him giggle uncontrollably. Curious and amused, he wondered, why do we get ticklish? <laughs> Determined to find out, Um Sum shrank and entered his own body. He landed just under the skin, where huh? countless nerve endings were spread out. As Um Sum explored, the feather brushed the skin again, and the nerves flickered huh? with energy. They quickly sent signals racing through the body toward the brain. The signals huh? first arrived at the part that sensed touch, then moved to the areas that handled emotion. The brain got a little confused and sent two quick commands to the muscles. The first command caused the body to jerk slightly, trying huh? to move away from the tickle. At the same time, the second command created a huh? burst of giggles. He noticed that this only huh? worked when the touch was unpredictable. Strong or steady pressure didn't cause the same reaction. The brain needed surprise to trigger ticklishness. Then Um Sum tried something else. Huh? He tickled his own hand. This time, nothing happened. Huh? Inside the brain, he saw why. When he moved his own hand, the brain already knew what to huh? expect. Since there was no surprise, there was no ticklish feeling. <laughs> Smiling proudly, Um Sum now understood the mystery. Um Sum was sitting in the park on a lazy afternoon, when suddenly his mouth opened wide and he let out a long mm. yawn. He wondered, why do we yawn? To find out, Um Sum shrank and entered his own head. Inside, he landed near the brain. Huh? All around him, things felt slower than usual. The blood was carrying less oxygen, and the body seemed heavy and dull. It was as if everything was moving in slow motion. Suddenly, the brain commanded the body to yawn. The order spread quickly, and the jaw opened wide while the chest expanded. A powerful wave of air rushed in, sweeping Um Sum off his feet and carrying him into the lungs as they stretched like giant balloons. Fresh oxygen filled the space and spread into the bloodstream. Red blood cells picked it up and glowed brighter as they raced away like messengers on a mission. Amsum followed them upward as they streamed into the brain. Neurons that had been faint moments ago now lit up brightly, firing with energy. As the jaw stretched wider and the chest pulled open, the wide stretch pushed the dullness out, <laughs> and Amsum felt the whole space inside brighten and grow lively again. Finally, Amsum floated out. Now he understood why we yawn. Amsum was lying under the night sky, gazing at the sparkling stars. His eyes rested on Pluto, glowing faintly at the edge of the solar system. He remembered it was once called the Ninth Planet, but no longer carried that title. <laughs> Curious to know why, Amsum spread his arms and soared into space. He zoomed past Mars, darted by the storms of Jupiter, and glided over Saturn's dazzling rings. At last, he reached Pluto, a small icy world where the sun looked like a tiny dot in the sky. Omsum landed on its frozen ground. Suddenly, the calm silence broke. From the swirling Kuiper belt came a rush of icy debris. Huh? Huge boulders of rock and ice tumbled through space, making the orbit crowded and messy. Amsum quickly recalled the three rules of being a planet. The first was orbiting the sun, which Pluto did. The second was being round in shape, which Pluto was. But the third rule demanded clearing the neighborhood. Huge huh? boulders of rock and ice were swirling wildly in Pluto's neighborhood. Pluto tried hard to pull them away with its gravity, but to no avail. Twisting and dodging, Amsum finally escaped the storm of debris. Catching his breath, he understood the answer. Pluto could not clear its orbit, and that was why it was called a dwarf planet. <laughs> Amsum was lying in bed when the lights suddenly went out. The room turned black and every object appeared scarier. His heart began to race, 
and he pulled his blanket close. Amsam wondered, huh? why are we afraid of the dark? Determined to find the answer, Amsam shrank and entered his own brain. He landed inside a glowing maze where signals from the eyes rushed in. Normally, the eyes sent clear pictures, but without light, huh? the signals grew faint and scattered. Just then, the faint signals twisted into frightening shapes. A chair appeared like a tall figure, and a toy seemed to have glowing eyes in the dark. The amygdala, the part that controls fear, lit up like an alarm, messages racing through the body. Amsum's heart pounded faster, his muscles tightened, and he felt trapped in a maze of fear. Then, huh? Amsum noticed something important. The fear was not from real monsters. <laughs> it was the brain's way of protecting him. Long ago, when people lived in forests, darkness often meant danger from hidden predators. Those who stayed alert survived. Even now, when the room is safe, the brain still uses the same instinct, preparing for threats whenever vision fails. With that realization, smiling proudly, Aum Sum now understood the mystery.